द वे फॉरवर्ड इज तौरा फिर तो स्वागत है मैं तौरा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह हुन असी गल करंगे हंटिंगटन टाउन काउंसिल दे एक और कैंडिडेट जेन हिबर्ट दे नाल जेन यू आर वेरी वेरी वेलकम टू द शो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर हैविंग मी आई एम रियली ग्लैड टू बी हियर जेन वी कैन सी यू आर ऑन द कैंप एंड ट्रेल एंड वी रियली अप्रिशिएट योर टेकिंग आउट द टाइम टू स्पीक विद आवर व्यूअर्स Well, I'm I'm very glad to be here. I'm so sorry that I don't have a better backdrop behind me besides my car, but I didn't want to miss the chance to speak to you and your your listeners, and I also didn't want to miss out on an opportunity to do some campaigning out in town. So I'm trying to fit as much into this day as possible. But thank you for your patience and for having me here. We we appreciate that and we understand that. Jill, I understand that you have been a lifelong educator uh, and a business leader. Uh, you have uh, been uh, president and trustee of the Huntington School District for 9 years can you tell our viewers more about yourself sure uh, so one of the things that i'm most passionate about in life is education and young people uh -huh. and so i've dedicated my professional career to doing just that both as a uh, a uh, teacher i taught public school education when i lived in massachusetts i taught kin uh, kindergarten in a public school for a number of years mm -hmm. then i moved to long island with my husband when we wanted to start a family and although i didn't go back to teaching in a public school once my children were school age i did go back to teaching in a nursery school so that i could both work and be home when my kids got home um at that point after about 5 years of teaching in that nursery school the director retired and i was able to move into the director's position so i'm now an administrator for the last 6 years and i run all aspects of the nursery school including personnel and registration and health and safety and building facilities all of those types of things tuition you know making sure that we were you know within the regulations and then um about 10 years ago was a really dark time in my school district for those of you who are from the Huntington School District area you may remember that 10 years ago was when uh, a school building got closed because of a spate of violence that was in the area mm -hmm. and at that time they closed one of our school buildings and it was um i thought a terrible decision and so at that point i ran for school board there were five of us running for two spots and i was able to get the most votes and take one of those spots and be part of the board that then reopened that school and uh reinvigorated the education of the school district by um turning that building into a stem which stands for science technology engineering and math a mm -hmm. stem focused magnet school which has really um i think improved the educational offerings of our school district but it also allowed us to do some other changes to the school district that were to the benefit of the students and the community Mm -hmm. So I'm awesome. very very proud. I know that was kind of a long answer. I'm really proud of the work that I did on the school district. I had 9 years I worked for the school district and it's all volunteer work. So while you do get elected, I think it may be the only elected unpaid volunteer position that you can run for and I did it proudly and I was so grateful and so happy to be part of that school district and never looked back. Just so gratified no, by no. the work that I did there. Jen, Jen we thank you for your service. We appreciate that. And uh in the times we are now, you know, uh education uh, ha has been badly affected with this covid situation you know so it would be great to have somebody like you who knows it first hand what does it take to provide that to make it possible for our kids uh jen how, how long uh, have you been a resident of huntington have you been here for for long so i am born and raised on long island but in nassau county in a small town called east williston i don't know how many of you would recognize it it's a really tiny town mm -hmm. but i graduated from wheatley high school and then went to college in boston my husband is a man from maine 
we met when we were at Tufts University. And when we decided we wanted to start a family, we realized that we needed or wanted to be closer to one of our families. And I always say I won that battle. So we ended up on Long Island. But at that time, we really wanted to move to a town that first of all, offered us some of the things that New England offered in terms of an old fashioned community sense and a walkable downtown. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we were really looking for that was very important to us was diversity because being away at college, I realized that that a diverse community brings a richness and a, a depth and a, a, a just benefits that, that we really wanted for our family and wanted our children to be a part of. And so Huntington met the bill for us. And so I think it was about 25 years ago that we moved here and pretty soon we you know, had our first son followed by two more sons. And 25 years later, we're still in the same house that um, that we bought and we intend to stay, uh, you know, f forever, basically. That, that, that's great to know. Uh, Jen, uh, besides your uh, role as an educator, are there any community groups, service groups that you're involved with? Yes, I, most of the community work that I've done has centered around the school district and around education, because as I said earlier, it, it, I'm passionate about education, particularly public school education, which I feel is such a vital part of our democracy. So I have to say that most of the community work I've done has been around the school district, but within working within the school district, it's given me an opportunity to attend and be part of all kinds of community community groups, including attending meetings for the Huntington Opportunity Resource Center. Mm -hmm. I attended town board meetings as a school district person. That's the first time I actually attended a town meeting was to attend it as a school board member. Mm -hmm. And I've been part of, I have to say, I've been part of HEFI, which is the Huntington Foundation for Excellence in Education. Since I left the board, I've uh, joined that organization to help bring grant money to programs at the school district that the um, school district itself can't afford to um, support financially. Mm -hmm. And I also was really actively involved in the Boy Scouts of America because my husband was a PAC leader, PAC 310. He was the leader for a long time. And so I was able to be part of that organization as well and donate and volunteer some of my time. Mm -hmm. So Jen, I would like to ask you, what is your inspiration behind running for this office? My inspiration behind running for this office is that I really feel that our town hall isn't serving our community as well as it should. Mm -hmm. I feel that it, a lot of times what's going on at town hall is ineffective and unresponsive to the community needs. And I know that after serving nine years on a school board, I have the skills that it takes to make our town hall more responsive to the community and the taxpayers. I've worked on behalf of our community before. I worked as a volunteer for nine years. And, and I, I would be so happy to put those skills and that experience to good work for our community members here in Huntington Township. Mm -hmm. And I really think that my experience would be a great match for what needs to be done at Town Hall. But I also think that coming in with fresh eyes and looking at the Town Hall as somebody who has never held a political office would also be of value because I think that right now what we need is to kind of reimagine some of our systems. I think if there's one thing the pandemic showed us, mm -hmm. it's that some of our systems are antiquated, that they could use reimagining, and that there are probably ways to um, modernize and reinvent some of the ways that town hall works for our community that would make it more effective and less expensive to the taxpayers. Jen, we will talk more about your plan after a short break. To see Vektero, the way forward. The way forward is toda fir tu swagat hai main toda host Harjot Singh aaj assi gal kar rahe ha Huntington Town Council de candidate Jen Hibbertnal Jen I would like to uh, ask you what do you think are the top 3 issues in this election I think the top 3 issues uh 
are, for one thing, I think the inefficiency of town hall and the way it's running right now, which I just spoke about. I think that it needs to be revamped and um, made to work better for our community and our taxpayers. Mm -hmm. The second issue that I think is really important is our environment. I think that living on Long Island, we're all well aware that our natural resources are incredibly important to us. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we want to wait until it's too late to be able to take good care of them. And I think that a thoughtful, proper plan in terms of development and infrastructure is necessary and vital mm -hmm. to protecting our natural resources. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I would say the third issue for me is always going to be about the youth. So I really would like to see Huntington provide more programs, more mentorship programs, more internships, more opportunities for young people to be involved in positive things when they're outside of school. And I think that any, any um, support and any opportunities that we can provide to our young people will pay off down the road because we'll have wonderful community um, involvement from them and we'll know that we've provided them with what they deserve and need. Mm -hmm. uh, and Jen, you know, there's, there's a, lot, a lot of t uh, talk in the town that we need uh, development, we need to bring in businesses. We had Joe on the show earlier and he was telling why we need to bring business, you know, to protect uh, you know, the property taxes. We, we need to raise revenue somewhere. And I asked him as well that, you know, a big concern for our residents is, is the character of the town. You know, whereas we definitely want development, uh, we don't want to pay that extra money in taxes, we still don't want to be overburdened with, with traffic, issues with uh, parking and, uh, you know, uh, losing our beautiful environment that we have around us. Do, how, how do you look at this situation? Do, do you draw a balance somewhere? I think balance is the key word. You just use the word that I've been using over and over because it does need to be a balancing act and it's not easy. We need revenue in town. Joe is absolutely positively right and he has some great ideas about how to bring more revenue into the town. On the flip side of that coin is the idea that people move to Huntington because they liked the character of the town. It's the same thing I just said about why my husband and I moved here. Mm -hmm. We moved to Huntington because it reminded us of New England. It had the character and the old fashioned feel of a neighborhood you might find in in New England with a downtown where people know each other. And that's true of Huntington. I walk around the village of Huntington and I walk in and out of the shops that I'm in every day. And there is that feeling of having a real hometown. That is a balancing act, That, but but it's not impossible. And obviously there are ways, If I think if we're creative enough and thoughtful enough, I think we can come up with ways to balance that out. In other words, we want to bring additional revenue into the town and we certainly want to support our small businesses and they deserve our support always, but especially now coming off of that pandemic. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we don't want to see any more of our green spaces and our open spaces overdeveloped. I think people like parks. They moved to Huntington because it has beautiful access to the water. We don't want to see everything paved with concrete and, and um, lose that character. So I think some of the things that we have to consider are ways to reimagine some of the buildings that we already have up. Mm -hmm. In other words, some of the retail businesses, unfortunately, are not going to reopen after the pandemic, and especially some of these big box stores. I know in Hicksville, close to where I grew up, there was a huge Sears store. It was there forever, for decades. Mm -hmm. It was going out of business for a long time. It's been, you know, Sears has been struggling. Well, what they did is they turned it into a senior living center, and it was a brilliant way to, to basically recycle one building and use it to provide to the community things that we really need now. So while the community maybe couldn't support a giant Sears anymore, what we do have is a population on Long Island that needs places to live where, you know, especially in our aging population where there's assisted living, where they have access to support systems. So I think given creativity and um, 
a willingness to do the hard work to find the solutions. And that's what I bring to the table is a willingness to do the hard work to find the solutions. I really think we can strike a balance between providing revenue and bringing new business into town while at the same time maintaining the beautiful, charming character of this town that we love so much. <laughs> uh Jen, you mentioned that one of the things that, that attracted uh, you to Huntington was its diversity. Now, yes. uh, South Asians, which, uh, which are, are most of the viewers uh, of this show, uh, are new immigrants into the community. I wanted to ask you, have you been able to reach out to South Asians? What, what are you doing to reach out to this community for your elections? <laughs> I have been actually able to, and I've been recently invited um, to attend, to come and visit a mosque, mm -hmm. which is a lovely uh, invitation. I'm very much looking forward to it this weekend. I have been trying to find as many opportunities as possible to meet community members and community groups that I haven't had an, an ability to interact with. Obviously through the school district, I had an opportunity to interact with families from all different places who were, you know, not only from different places culturally, but even from different places socioeconomically and different places educationally. And I always, always am happy for those opportunities because I feel like the richness that comes from the diversity and and is a is a benefit it's a treasure it's it's what makes our country a great place it's what made the huntington school district a really special place so i would say to your viewers that if they have ideas and ways for me to get out and meet more of our community members that I haven't met yet and more groups of people that I haven't been able to interact with yet, I would love to hear from them because the one thing you'll know about me is I am happy for any opportunity to meet with people. I'm really a people person. It's a, another one of the strengths that I would bring to the table because I very much like to work collaborative, collaboratively with people. Mm -hmm. I also really like to listen to people. I think it's really important I think that's one of the skills that we have lost over time is the ability to be a really good and respectful listener. Mm -hmm. And so I hope to provide that too. And if your listeners out there would like to invite me somewhere to be a good listener and to interact, I would love to hear from them. I, I, I'm sure uh, our viewers have noted that down and they are planning to meet you soon. That's uh, good. I'm, I mean it when I say it. So you invite me and I'll be there. Sure. Uh, Jen, recently there was an unfortunate event uh, in, in the town of Huntington at Vault uh, Whitman uh, Mall. A, a teen sick uh, a teenager mm -hmm. uh, was attacked by another teen. Now uh, the other teen has uh, was arrested and has been charged with a hate crime. Now we have we have seen this increasing uh, in a number of hate crimes uh, around the country, particularly against Asians at the uh, at this time. How, how how do you address a situation like that? Well, first of all, I think you, you need to make an example of the person who committed the offense in the first place so that people get the message that that is unacceptable in our town. Mm -hmm. It's unacceptable in our country, but let's start right here and say it is unacceptable in our town. Um, I also think that, the again, the more education you can give people, the better. I think when you start people young, realizing and acknowledging that that diversity and differences are a, are a wonderful thing. It's something to be celebrated and not something to be targeted. I think it's really important that you reach people when they're young about that. Mm -hmm. I also think it's really important that we elect leaders who speak those kinds of words and those and and know how to um, to support and advance diversity and inclusion and not tolerance. I hate that word of tolerance because I feel like it sounds like, well, we're just putting up with it. It's mm -hmm. not tolerance we need. What we need is true appreciation and, and integration and diversity that's celebrated. And I think that we do that when we elect leaders who believe that. I think part of the reason that we're seeing 
an increase in so many hate crimes has to do with the leadership that we had over the last four years, frankly. I think it opened up a Pandora's box and people who would never have thought to say some of these things out loud have suddenly been given hmm. license to say these things out loud. And I think what we need our leaders to send the message that it isn't acceptable to say those things out loud or to certainly act on those kinds of thoughts. Absolutely. So I do think it has something to do with leadership. Jen, Jen uh, we have run out of time here. <laughs> I, I would uh, ask you to quickly tell us what differentiates you from the other candidates and why are you the most desirable candidate for the, for the town council? Okay, first of all, I want to thank you so much for having me and for putting up with me being in my car and out on the campaign trail. I will tell you, I think the thing that differentiates me is, first of all, my experience on the school board and, and my experience of being somebody who already represented this community. I spent nine years proudly representing to the Huntington community, and it was the most gratifying work I've done besides being a mom. So I really feel like I already bring that experience to the table. I know how to be responsive to people who are having issues or who are coming to me with concerns. I know how to follow up. And on top of that, I know how to make tough decisions and not, um, and not be afraid to stand by them. When I make a decision, I make it for the right reasons. And because of that, even if I find there's a pushback, if I feel I've made a decision for the right reason, I'm absolutely ready to stand by it. The other thing I would say is, and, and this has to do with my experience, mm -hmm. I know a lot of the people who will be running will be, you know, business owners and people who have had, you know, jobs running corporations or maybe, you know, heads of things. What you have in me is a person who volunteered nine years of my time and energy already for this community. So when Jen, I yes, tell Jen, you that I'm ready to do that, I am ready to do that. Sure. Jen, we thank you very much for taking out this time to speak with us. We wish you all the very best for your campaign. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate you having me. Good night to everybody. Thanks thank again. Bye-bye. ACG Sade Do. Uh, Long Island Huntington the two candidates Huntington Town Council was there. I hope that you see closely. Be careful now to see the way forward.